So this video is gonna be on personality and personality disorders. Now you're growing up, you're learning what's good, what's bad, what to do, what not to do. So we always classically see it in films as like the devil on the shoulder telling you to do bad things and then the angel on the shoulder telling you to do good things. So the devil on the shoulder, we usually just call it as id. The angel on the shoulder, we call it the super ego. And they battle it out and then ultimately you decide what you should do. And that is your ego. That is basically you in a nutshell. You kind of make all these battles internally and then you, you do it subconsciously. So the ego is you and after some time, you start to express patterns of behavior, patterns of what you do and what you don't do. To say, what not to say, and this becomes your, your personality. Everybody has a personality and it's basically based on what they think is right to do and what they think is wrong to do and they come all together and become their ego. That is their personality. Now in this video, we're going to talk about personality disorders. This is personality characteristic traits that might be detrimental to the person, cause them distress, or make it difficult for them to integrate into society. And there's a lot of controversy about this, just a brief aside. A lot of people saying, you know, that's based on subjectivity, that's based on cultural and social norms, can we really judge this? But that's not your worry. So we're just going to learn, it, learn about it here. And you gotta just know it for a step and then whether or not you decide to implement it will be up to you. So we're just gonna learn it for the step and we're gonna learn about personality disorders. So again, this is personalities or personality traits that might cause distress to the patient or make it difficult them, make it difficult for them to integrate into our society. So personality disorders. And there are three categories, sometimes called clusters. So you have cluster a, B, and C. And an easy way to remember is cluster A is known as the weird category, B is known as the wild, and C is known as the worried. worried. These are not actual terms you should use you know, in medical terminology, but just an easy way to remember in case all else fails, you kind of can remember at least what cluster the personality disorder belongs to, but they usually want you to know more than that. They want you to know the particular personality disorder in each cluster. So we'll start with cluster A. That's your weird personality disorder. So weird. It's marked by odd behavior. That's the weird part of it. And troubles with developing social relationships. Troubles with social relationships. These are things like a paranoid personality. These are persons that don't trust people. Yeah. So that's the troubles with social relationship part. Um, they might see a new guy at work and think, you know, he's actually not to be trusted. He's not actually there to work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they might exhibit odd behaviors, odd social behaviors to a person, to you. That's the odd behavior part. Very important part though, paranoid people don't exhibit things like psychosis or hallucinations. They, they don't trust the person, that, but they don't think they're like some undercover secret agent or some alien or et cetera. They just don't trust them. That's why they're paranoid. Another one, you can have schizoid. Schizoid, easy way to remember schizoid is it rhymes with Android. These people are like robots. They're very withdrawn, withdrawn. They don't like social interaction. In fact, they're very content with just never interacting with people in general. So I'll say does not desire social relationships. I got a question on this. I don't remember if it was my test or a practice question, but I just talked about a computer programmer who studied and stayed in a room all day didn't interact with anybody and didn't want to. That's the important part. Does not desire to interact with it, that's schizoid, personality disorder. Last but not least, schizotypal or schizotypal. This is characterized by odd beliefs, <laughs> which is kind of the, the name of the game. Uh, things like believing in palm reading or telepathy or mind reading or aliens, etc. Those put that in the question stem. They might dress very eccentrically. Again, probably be in the question stem. So all beliefs, clothing, and something you should know, that's the odd behavior part. How about the troubles with social relationships part? They, they want to make relationships, but they just have very, they're very anxious about it. It gives them anxiety, anxious. 
They want to, they're just very anxious about social relationships. As opposed to schizoid, which doesn't desire them at all. Cluster A personality disorders are related to something. Can you take a guess what it is? It's, re it's related and associated with schizophrenia. None of them meet the criteria of schizophrenia, but it's highly associated with it. So associated with schizophrenia. And the name of many of these kind of give it away. That's A, aka weird personality disorders. B, it's gonna be your wild. People that exhibit lack of impulse control or destructive behavior. So let's kind of see what we're talking about here. Antisocial is gonna be our first one. Antisocial, we talked about when we're talking about childhood development. Antisocial is just a criminal, more or less. And I mean that in the literal sense, is someone that commits crimes, so they don't have really much regard to other people. That's that wild destructive behavior. <clears throat> That's 18 and older. That's antisocial. 18 and younger is called conduct disorder. Good. If you got it wrong, I'm disappointed. No, I'm just going <laughs> to just review my notes. But very important that you make that distinction of 18 and under and 18 and over as an easy way they can trick you. That's antisocial. Borderline. Borderline is people that have unstable mood, unstable image of themselves, or so self-image. They often get into dramatic relationships. They often threaten suicide if it doesn't go right or threaten suicide to get their way. They might uh, do things like self-mutilation. So these are very important things you should look out for in the question stem. Often get into um, really abusive relationships or relationships are unstable. I just write unstable. I think that's the best way to kind of describe the personality traits. They use a defense mechanism called splitting. Splitting is when you see things as black and white, so you either love something or hate something. And one thing you should know, there's a special therapy developed called dialectical therapy. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. That's just therapy that's directed more towards people with borderline personality disorders. Third up, histrionic. These are very dramatic people, so people that exaggerate a lot. So if something's 12 inches, they might say, it's 18 feet long, etc. Or it's a thousand degrees outside. They're very dramatic. They need to be the center of attention. So they might dress very brightly or make loud noises or they need people's eyes on them or they, they're, they're very conscious of their self-image and how other people feel about them. So I'll just write dramatic, care about opinions. No tendency for things like self-harm or, or any suicide ideation, so it's not anything like borderline. They're just very dramatic, need to be the center of attention. Last but not least, narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder. These are, people, these are people that think they're the best and people should respect them, treat them like kings, they're entitled to things. And these people also don't take criticism well. They, they hold themselves up to some, some sort of image and if you try and criticize them, they get very defensive. So I'll just say arrogant. Something you should know, personality, personality disorders are associated with drug use. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about cluster C. So cluster C, <laughs> you can't really read my writing, but uh, it'll be worried. So people that are very worried and it shouldn't surprise you that cluster C personality disorders are associated with anxiety disorders. A lot of these patients will exhibit signs of anxiety. Of anxiety. First one will be avoidant. Avoidant people avoid social interactions. It gives them anxiety. They want to make friends, but they're scared of rejection. So it's kind of like schizotypal or schizotypal. These people, these people are also anxious about relationships, but these people will exhibit odd behavior. That's why it's under cluster A, weird. So cluster C doesn't have the odd behavior. They're just very fearful of rejection. They want to make friends, they just are too scared to. So you have to differentiate that from schizotypal or schizoid. Schizoids don't have no desire, so easy to differentiate. And another thing is social phobia. Social phobia is fear of being in a, in a social environment or, or saying or doing something embarrassing. That's social phobia that's different from this. Next up, dependent. Dependent is someone that's dependent on another. 
So they might call and say, hey, I'm going to get some groceries. Is that all right? And call there and say, hey, hey, you know, Rouse is closed. Can I go to Albertsons? Is that all right? And then they, they basically need the reassurance of their partner for everything. They're very dependent. And they're very submissive and very lacking in their self-confidence. And unfortunately, these people often find themselves in abusive relationships where their partner is very dominating, very abusive. So know this is associated with abusive relationships, classically seen. And lastly, to round things all off, obsessive, compulsive. This is not the same thing as OCD, obsessive compulsive personality disorder is a perfectionist basically. Once things are done a certain way, has strict rules, guidelines, wants everyone to follow along. Did I just write perfectionist? Perfectionist? How is this not the same as a, someone with OCD? Someone with OCD, which we'll talk about in a future video, someone with OCD has these obsessive compulsions and it causes, it causes them distress. They don't want to do these things. They don't want to check the lock 14 times. And when they're doing it, they're, they're thinking, why am I doing this? I wish I didn't have to do this. People that have obsessive compulsive personality disorder are perfectionists. They think nothing's wrong with them. They wish everybody else was like them. They, they think what they're doing is perfect. Yeah. And this is how things should be. So that's completely different from OCD. OCD, it causes them distress. This couldn't be happier. So that's an easy giveaway. All right. So that does it for personality disorders. Thanks.